What's up, snowbirds? On this episode, we're going to show you what it's really like to visit Machu Picchu. There's an alpaca or a llama. I don't know the difference. <laughs> they don't mind people at all. It's crazy the architecture in this place. I don't know how they even built something all the way up here. I could barely climb up this mountain as it is. Okay guys, so we just purchased our bus tickets to get us to and from Machu Picchu. It was 162.50 soles total for two people. And now we go line up. So remember you have to pre-buy your tickets the day ahead. We bought ours for how much? 60 Canadian each. Okay, so we've lined up. Now we got our stamp. Looks like we have to wait till the next bus. We have been told to wait 20 minutes for the bus. I'm not sure why we can't get on this bus. It's not full, but oh well. So we also read online that there's no tripods, no professional camera equipment, so all we have is the little GoPro mic. Hopefully that's good enough to hear as well. Sorry guys. We're also going to try and keep the cinematic B-roll to a minimum so you see what it's actually like up there. You get a good feeling of uh, what the experience is. So this little uh, school group that just walked by us, most of them walked by and then one kid just happened to want to shake our head and he had a firm grip. That was a great head shake grip too. And then the rest of them lined up. All right, being shuffled into line. Uh, before we leave, I just want to cover what you need to bring. You need your passport. Your Machu Picchu ticket. Your Machu Picchu ticket. Your Machu Picchu ticket. Your bus ticket. Bring your jacket just in case because apparently it gets pretty chilly up there. Get rid of it anymore. Here we go. Very bumpy. We've arrived at the entrance, I guess. So, a couple things. Uh, if you don't want to pay for the bus, it is an option to walk the very last bit of the Inca Trail, but it's like nine kilometers straight up. If you don't want to do that, you can also walk the road that the buses go on. So, you can save an extra 30 bucks per person if you so choose. So, now we've also read that it's compulsory to have a guide, so we'll find out what that is. But I'm very excited to stamp our own passport to Machu Picchu. Alrighty guys, we just entered Machu Picchu without a guide, although it is compulsory. Um, so we know no facts, unfortunately. So get ready for some wicked Wikipedia facts, baby. There's an alpaca or a llama. I don't know the difference. Go get our Insta. So the line actually went really fast. People were pretty good. They just got their shots and got out of there. And we got ours. So you don't actually have to stop at the first photography. It's gorgeous. Another one we just found. And there's another one up there. Oh, and there's another one. Just so you know. We see a llama on the show. We're gonna go get to it.
it may seem weird. He looks really dirty, but very thick wool. There's a baby one over there. Is that, is that to us? No. There's men whistling all over. Okay, here goes. What's it actually like to pet a llama? Or an alpaca? Whichever one it is. Hi. Hola, llama. Hi. You want some, some lovin's? They don't mind people at all. It's got twigs all in them though. Ugh. He wants the grass in between. You can ask the grass, buddy. You mow that lawn. Whoa, that's thick. So thick, like matted, like dreadlock. Oh my god. I see the architecture in this place. I don't know how they even built something all the way up here. I could barely climb up this mountain as it is and then having to lug all these stones up here. So obviously as you can see this this is the all rebuilt stuff. And when I say rebuilt it's still like a few hundred years old and like you can see where the original stuff was where it's the big boulders perfectly aligned like I don't even know how they, how they did that. Some ancient alien shit right there and like even right below me is a drain for water. So they obviously pre-planned that kind of shit and that's like, you know, hundreds of years ago, how do you even think about that? The cities we've been to nowadays are like, don't even know what the hell they're doing with their water. So yeah, you can see, original, rebuilt. Original, rebuilt. Okay. Original, Rebuilt. Look at that. Those stones are massive. Someone used to play Tetris. That's for sure. Thought we would see way more alpacas. That's what I came for. Machu Picchu means old mountain, but also known as the lost city of the Incas. It stands 2,430 meters above sea level and was built in the 15th century. In the 16th century, however, it was abandoned when the Inca Empire was conquered by the Spaniards. It wasn't until 1911 that the site was made known to the outside world. In 1981, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site and then in 2007 became one of the new seven wonders of the world. To this day, many of Machu Picchu's mysteries remain unsolved, like that show on Netflix. So this, this is exactly what I came to see, is these perfectly interlocked rocks. It's very impressive to me, and this is what I came for. Not the old, you know, stacked rocks like those ones. Megan's found herself another alpaca. <laughs> Okay, we have to get into a very long homeward row bus line. But there's tons of buses, they come like every two minutes, so it won't take too long. Hopefully. Time to locate a cerveza. 
we just found a spot here along the main, a main road in August Calientes. We get 25% off the whole bill, two free Pisco Sours with our meal, and then after that, two for one beers. I like good deals. Yeah, it's like it's basically expensive. It is out of our budget, but when he said 25% off and two free Pisco Sours, he sold it. We could always just like share an appetizer and then get a big meal later. Now we have our second set. That's right. Just from a store. So it was eight souls for mine, five souls for six souls for hers. So now we're gonna give you our final thoughts on my championship. So it's good, we went with the bag. Obviously the views of the mountain. Wow. Being up there, just mind blowing. The grandeur of the structure is amazing. To be there finally. It was nice and sunny, so that was good. Yeah, we didn't we didn't get the cloudy rain as many people do, which is which is nice. It was just pretty. That's the kind of quality input we were hoping for, right? That's all I got, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It was just pleasing to the eye. Yes, very pleasing. It was obviously so impressive, the stonework, the old stonework, and it just makes me have so many questions. Was it aliens? I don't know. So not the bad. Overcrowded. Price. That being said, of course, you know, it is in the middle of the end. It's, it's way up there. It's kind of understandable to why it is so expensive. It is very hard to get to. Yeah. Just our personal opinions. Right? Yeah, we're just giving you our raw and honest opinion as regular folk. Mm -hmm. That is all. Before we ramble too much. That's right. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And see you next time. Bye. In this episode, we're going to show you what it's like in the sweet little surfer beach town at the north end of Peru. So this is the main strip on the tour at the end, and where you'll most likely stay. Again, Justin and I love the family-run restaurants. The food feels more authentic, like grandma's cooking kind of place. If you are interested in learning about how to get to Machu Picchu on a budget, make sure you check out our previous blog or our blog post listed in the description below. Be sure to check the links in our descriptions for promos, discounts, packing, and more. And of course, you can always visit our website for full itineraries, prices, and other resources.